Hey guys, welcome to the video and welcome to the channel. Those who are new, this is KMZ and this is going to be my part two of this little switch tutorial mini series that I'm doing regarding cheats. Now, before we start, I'm going to spend maybe two or three minutes getting some of the housekeeping stuff and other things out of the way because I wanna make sure that you know what this video is about just in case it really doesn't meet your needs or exactly what you're looking for, then you, know, you don't have to watch it. Uh, so we're going to clear that up here in a little bit. But first, before we get into that, it's assumed going into this that you have watched part one fully and that you have Edison SE Homebrew installed. You also have the Edison overlay installed, although technically it's not necessary as long as you have the homebrew, but it's just a lot better if you do. I covered that in part one. I really won't be covering anything that we covered in part one. And in addition, I won't be showing you how to, you know, mod your switch. It's already taken into account that you have a modded system. You know your way around it. You know how to get to your files on your SD card, how to access them and all of that, whether it's FTP or by any other method. The only thing really we need here today is just to edit a file or two. So really you don't need like a text editor or anything like that. Technically you could do this just via FTP. Actually, in reality, you can even do this right from the switch itself if you have a file manager that can rename files. We'll talk more about that when we get to it. I do recommend that you have your phone handy nearby because it may help when we get to a certain part where you can take a picture of some information that you're going to be needing. It'll just be easier to reference that information if you have it on your phone. Oh, and by the way, this should work not only for people using Atmosphere, but those of you using SXOS as well. Okay, now this is primarily going to focus on three issues. So if you're experiencing one of these three issues or maybe all of them, this should help you out. The first one is that you were using cheats just fine, but then you updated the game and the cheats no longer work. The second one is that you've downloaded cheats you know are designed for your specific game. Even the title of the cheats match the title of your game when I say title, I really mean the title ID, but for some reason the cheats still are not popping up. And the third one is those of you who are using the Edison Homebrew, when you go into the Homebrew, you are hit with a message like the one you're seeing on your screen, where it tells you that the cheats you have installed do not match the version or the region of the game that you have installed, which means that you have cheats there for the game. It's just the region or the version of the cheats do not match the region or the version of the game. So if you're experiencing any one of these three things, then this video is for you. And as an added bonus at the end of the video, I'm also going to tell you how you can get cheats that are working for like one version of the game and maybe get them to work on different variants of the game, meaning the cheats work fine on the regular version, but now maybe there's a game of the year edition or a definitive edition, a special edition, or maybe the cheats work on the USA version of the game and not the European version of the game. So I'm going to show you how you can hopefully get those cheats to work on those different variants of the same game. And with all of that out of the way, finally, let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so today we will be using OutRun as our little example here. This is a cool arcade a classic game from back in the day. Anyway, let me go ahead and let me launch the Edison overlay. Okay, there's the overlay menu. Let's go into Edison. All right, and then here before we go into cheats, make a note here of program ID, which is actually the title ID and the build ID, the number underneath it. However, we're gonna get those numbers from the Edison homebrew because they're bigger and a lot easier to see. So don't worry about it for now, but that's a way you can see them there as well. Now, when we go into the cheats, you'll notice it says no cheats loaded. Let's get out of the overlay menu. We are going to keep our game running Press the home button and we are going to go over to the Edison homebrew. So let's go into album and this will put us into applet mode, which is fine. Now go into Edison. All right, and here you can see that Outrun is the game that's running because it's darkened and it has the little controller on it. Now we're going to make our way over to the cheats, which is the little letter C. Go into that. 
And here you can see that message is there where we have cheats installed, but the region or the version may not match. Again, you may not get this message. That's fine. Don't worry about it. So what we need to do is make a note of the TID, which is the title ID right up here and also the bid, which is the build ID right down here. When you have a game where the cheats were working and you update it, more than likely the uh, build version of the game changed and that's why the cheats no longer work. So we have to change it to the version that you have now. So what I suggest doing is break out your phone and just take a picture of this, make sure everything is nice and clear, or you can write down those two numbers, the TID and the bid, the PID we don't need. So once you have that information, we now need to go over to our SD card. Okay, guys, so at this point, you can go ahead, you can exit out of the Edison Homebrew. You can also exit out of your game because we need to access the SD card. Again, make sure you do this by however method you normally do. I have FTP going, so I am currently connected to my SD card via FTP, and you could do this that way. Also, you could do this right from a file manager within the switch, but fair warning, I use NX Show, which is a file manager, pretty much all of the time. And whenever I try doing this with that file manager, I kept getting crashes because when we go into the folder that contains all of those thousands of folders with the cheats and the files and stuff, I guess NX Shell can't handle it and it crashes. But another file manager may work or maybe later on NX Shell might update and it will fix that problem. But FTP seems to work just fine. So go ahead and go into your atmosphere folder on your SD card and then look for the contents folder. Now, if you have an older version of Atmosphere, this folder will be called Titles instead. If you're using SXOS, then you too will have a folder called Titles. We covered that in part one. So we go into the Contents folder, and this is where we manually updated our cheats and we stuck all the cheats in here. Now, be careful whenever you alter any of these files because some of these folders may belong to something else maybe uh, some homebrews or something else that might be vital. So be careful when you're altering stuff. Now, these cheats that are in here, these folders, these names, these numbers that are here are actually the title ID. So in this case for Outrun, the title ID is this. So that's the folder that we are gonna look for here. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for that. I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and I found the correct folder. Here it is right here. I have it highlighted and you can see it perfectly matches the title ID of the game. But just to confirm, when you go into the folder, usually there's a file there that has the name of the game and you can see this matches the game that we are using as an example, Outrun Sega Ages. Normally these cheat folders will also have another folder inside of them called cheats and that's where you need to go. When you go in there, you will see a text file. This text file is what contains all the cheats, but the name of the text file is actually the build ID of your game. And when the name of this text file does not match the build ID that Edison showed you, then the cheats will not work. So this is the issue right here. Now, guess what you have to do? All you need to do is rename this text file to the correct build ID and that's it. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the correct build ID. I'm gonna go here. And by the way, this is all nines because I changed it to that. In your case, usually there's only a few characters that are different, but let's go ahead and hit rename. And now we're going to paste the correct build ID, press enter, and believe it or not, that's it. You can go ahead and you can start up the game then go back into the Edison homebrew and hopefully your cheats will work again and cheats will pop up for that game. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to fire up Outrun again and let's see what happens. All right, so we're back at the game here. Let me go ahead and launch the overlay menu. All right, let's go to Edison and let's go to cheats. And there we go. Now here you can see that there is one cheat and this game only does have one cheat for it, but now it's there, whereas before it was not. Let's head on over to the Edison homebrew. So let's close out of the overlay. We're gonna leave the game running, just hit the home button. 
Let's head on over to album. And then we will be in Apple mode, which is fine. Let's head into Edison. It will show here that Outrun is the game that's running. Let's go to that little cheat box again. And there we go. The message is now gone and we can see the cheat is populated. So if you had the cheats working before and you updated and they didn't work, now they should work again. If you downloaded cheats and you know they should work for the specific game that you have, even like the title of the cheats match the title of your game. And when I say that again, I mean the title ID, but the cheats weren't working. It's probably because the version of your game was different. Maybe you had an updated version or something like that. So now they should work. And for those of you that were getting that message, that message should be gone and you should now see your cheats. And it's that simple. Simple. Now, before we end the video, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes or a few minutes going over that bonus pro tip stuff that I talked about earlier, where if you have cheats working for a specific version of a game, it's possible to get them to work for variants of the same game. For example, if there's a game of the year edition that comes out or a definitive edition, or maybe the cheats are working for the USA version of the game, but they don't work for the European version of the game. I'm going to show you how to get those cheats to hopefully work for those different variants. All right, so I am going to use Diablo 3 as an example here. All of the stuff that you see here was just made up from scratch just to save time and for the interest of making the tutorial go by quicker. So let's say you have a regular version of the game, in this case Diablo 3, you're using cheats and everything works great. And then later on, there's a game of the year edition or a definitive edition in this case, or some type of special edition that comes out of that game. Or maybe you have a friend who has the European version of the the game and the cheats don't work because the cheats were only designed to work on the USA version of the game. So you can hopefully get these cheats to work by making a couple of changes. You're going to need the title ID and the build ID of the regular game where the cheats are working. And you're also going to need the title ID and build ID of the variants of the game, in this case, the definitive edition. Once you have those pieces of information, you're going to find the folder containing the cheats of the regular game where the cheats are working and you need to make a copy of it. I cannot stress that enough. Make a copy of it because we're going to change the copy, not the original. So here I have a copy of that folder. I put it on my desktop. What we're going to do is we're going to change the name of this folder to the definitive edition or the variant of the game. We're going to use that title ID instead. So we're going to come here and we are going to rename this. And there we go. It now has the title ID of the variant of the game. Now, when we go into it, go into the cheats folder and there you will see that text file that has the build ID. And if you notice the build ID here, of course, matches the build ID that's here, but we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that, of course, to the build ID of the variant. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go here. Let's rename. Let's paste it. Enter. And that's it. We're done. Now all you need to do is take this folder and put it into the switch. It should not create a conflict because this folder has a different name from the original one. So you can have both of them in your switch since the title IDs are different and since the build IDs are different. You can then run the definitive version of the game or the variant of the game and see if the cheats work. Now there's no guarantee this is going to work. Maybe the cheats won't even populate or maybe they will populate, but only some of the cheats will work. Maybe none of the cheats will work or or maybe all of the cheats will work. You can just give it a try. You have nothing to lose. It's not like it's going to brick your system or anything, but try it out and hopefully you'll be able to get the cheats to work on the variant of the game. And that's it, guys. That's going to do it for the video. Don't forget to stay tuned for part three. Hopefully I'll get that knocked out either tomorrow or the next day. It should be relatively short. We are going to cover how to make sure that when you bring up the cheats, that by default, they are all disabled or turned off. There are still people that are having issues that when they bring up the cheats, they're just all turned on or all enabled, and that can cause some unwanted effects. So we'll go ahead and we'll fix that. 
If you found anything here useful, informative, helpful, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, the best way to do that is to make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, maybe hit the notification bell. Don't forget also, I finally set up my Patreon page. I'll put a link down in the description. When you go there, you can see what that's all about. When you become a member, it takes you to a special area of my Discord that's hidden and it's only open to those who contributed uh, to Patreon or have made some type of contributions in the past and you get some good stuff there, especially for those of you who use a modded Switch, but also PC stuff, PS4, and every week I add a little bit more so it's growing. You know, I appreciate you. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, make sure you have fun, and I will catch you on the next one.